Hey guys, it's Mr Bison and welcome back to Bison Maths. I hit 20,000 subscribers last week and so to celebrate I'm doing a mini Q&A. So let's get started. So Reem asks, what kind of practice can you do daily or weekly to ensure content isn't forgotten? Okay, so I would say daily and weekly you should be looking at doing things like the mixed exercises from the textbooks and you should be trying to do things that are from previous exercises and previous topics. I'd probably try and tack on about 30 minutes to every piece of homework, which is just reviewing previous chapters. That's my best advice for that. And Hassan Sajad asks, what are your thoughts on hard work versus talent? Hard work versus talent is a very interesting one. I would say that unless you're hoping to go to Oxford and Cambridge, hard work is pretty much the only thing that you need to get an A star. I'd say I've seen some really talented pupils in the past and those have been the people that have ended up going to Oxbridge. So unless that's where you're trying to go for, don't worry, hard work will be enough for you. Great, Alfie Parkin says, do you think it's easier to do A-level maths at the same time as further maths or one after the other? So I actually did A-level maths, then further maths. So I did that in uh, A-level in the first year and further in the second year. But since teaching it, I've only ever taught them in parallel. So I'm probably a bit biased in thinking that my way was better. But as a teacher, I don't think students have had any issues doing them in parallel. Question from Math Boy, favourite topic or sub area of maths? Probably my favourite topic, it's a very popular one, is calculus. I just love differentiation and integration. I love all the skills that there are and just so many different ways of being able to solve an integration problem. Plus, obviously, all of mechanics as well. Great. Adam Ashur says, best way to speed run A-level maths? Cool. Well, speed running, if by speed running you mean trying to do it as quick as possible, if the main thing you need to do is set aside enough time to actually properly practice the content. You probably could just watch all of my videos and learn the content, but I don't think you're really going to spot all the connections unless you're properly doing all of the practice. So make sure you set aside enough time. Henry Mark says, how useful is a maths and A level and how much better is it to get an A star or an A or B? So I'd say maths A level is a pretty useful one to have, but unless you're going to do something like engineering or physics for your future kind of uh, degree or career, you're probably not going to be using calculus or trigonometry in everyday life. But what I do think is useful about it is it shows employers and universities that you know how to think mathematically and that you know how to solve problems. How useful is it to get an A star versus an A or a B? Well, whatever your uni requires, okay? If you, your uni just wants you to get a B, you should just be happy with that. You're not going to get employers looking at you and going, oh, this one had an A star and this one had an A. Let's pick them about five years down the line. So don't worry about it too much. Imran Khan asks, what is the hardest topic in maths and what to watch out for? So I'd say the hardest topic in maths probably is integration, in my opinion. And that's just because there are so many different approaches that you can take to a problem. I have done a video on that that's trying to sort of say all of the strategies. So that's probably what I'd say to go and watch to help you look out for that one. And people also think trigonometry is very hard too, but I'd say integration. Same question from a few different people here. Jamie Winter, Hugo, hello, my name is Eleanor, and Via K ask, did you do a maths degree and which uni did you go to? Okay, so if I actually go back a little bit further with my education, I actually did, for A-level, I did maths, further maths, physics, French and history, and I got those five at the top grade. And then I actually went to the University of Oxford, St Catherine's College, to go and study history, not maths. A um, bit weird then that I became a maths teacher, and what I've done from 2019 to 2020 is I studied at the University of Birkbeck and I did something called a graduate diploma in maths, which was basically modules from the second and third year, which actually I loved, and it was kind of nice to do it after having become a maths teacher. Gison Du and Aaron Sales asked a similar question, non-maths related, but what's your favourite sport? So when I was at school, I was a lot more of like the academic kind and not very much into PE. But as a kid, I was taken to go and see Arsenal play football a lot, but I'm not really that kind of a sporty person. Matthew Gould said, what topics that are only in further maths should instead be in regular maths? Mm, that is a good question. Further maths makes you do a lot of the normal maths, uh, just to a kind of higher level. But I'd probably be interested to see the series topic from Core Pure Year One being put into normal maths, because the series in normal maths just kind of doesn't feel like it goes that far. So I probably want to pull, pull that series from further maths into maths. Great, Daniel asks, any tips for A-level maths? Okay, my number one tip that made me get the top grades in maths and further maths is anything that I didn't understand in a lesson, 
I went home and tried to make sure that I understood the concept fully before moving on. If you do that the whole way through the course, you're never going to find yourself getting tripped up. So don't move on to the next lesson until you've fully understood the topic. Question from Michaela Caroni. What year do you think has the hardest maths A-level papers? Mm, 2019, without a doubt. I went and met my pupils after the exam and several of them have been crying in the exam hall during the exam, 2019. Tough. Uh, Jamjar says, what is the best revision method? The best revision method, maths, practice, practice, practice. Obviously, after you've made sure you've understood everything first. Bob says, can you bring the red hair back? Oh, I don't know. I've had red hair, orange hair, pink hair, blue hair. Maybe. Red wasn't my favourite, so we'll see what colour is coming soon. Imran Khan, do you need a tutor for maths year 13? I mean, I never had a tutor. Lots of the students who have got top grades haven't had a tutor before. But if it's something that you feel will like help fill in the gaps, then go for it. But I'd encourage you to go and watch my teaching of the topics first. Um, you probably won't need a tutor, in my opinion. And Shafiq M7, will you do any videos on preparing for university admissions tests? So looking at stuff like the STEP and MAT, it's something I've been working on. I haven't got any videos ready yet. I'm actually prioritising my GCSE channel. Go and check out that GCSE channel for any siblings or cousins who might be doing maths at secondary school. So... Y9BH004 asks, apart from the cliche, what else can we do to go from C to A in year 13? Apart from the cliche, well, I'd say probably the biggest cliche that I am going to stick with is hard work. If you go and look at a recent video that I did, it was about like a summary of results day. And I had so many amazing comments from people that said what grades they changed from from the beginning of year 13 to their final results. People were going from C's, D's and E's to like A stars and A's and B's and making huge progress. And they put it down to watching my teaching and just doing a lot of practice and following my videos. So although it's a bit cliched and a bit of a self plug, I'd say kind of use my teaching and it should really help you out and a lot of hard work. Nice, good advice. Final question from Sid Rez. What's your favorite food? Pizza, obviously pizza. Thank you so much for all of the questions. Thank you for supporting my channel and getting me to 20,000 subscribers. I'd really appreciate it if you went and checked out my new channel, Bison Math GCSE. Obviously, it's going to be way too easy for the stuff that you guys are studying right now. But if you've got any friends or siblings that are still at secondary school, I'd love to get that channel off the ground. And thank you so much. See you soon.